Hey everybody, Will here. And today I join you along with the Black Dwarf, my scratch-built 16 terabyte file server. And the reason for that is because after almost three years of nearly 24 seven use, a hard disk has finally died. Now the good news is that the eight hard disks were configured in a RAID 5, and a RAID 5 has some redundancy to it, meaning that if a disk dies, you don't lose all the data. And take for example this, which has eight two terabyte disks, uh, we end up losing one of those disks, one two terabyte disk to the redundancy of the array. Um, so basically we still have about 14 gigabytes of usable space, while we can still lose any one of those eight hard drives and still maintain all the data. Now in addition to hosting files on my network on this large uh, 14 terabyte RAID array, um, it also is a fully functioning computer that runs Windows and it has a couple other hard drives in here which I'll show you in a bit. Um, so that I can do things like uh, it hosts my Dropbox file or my SkyDrive folders and um, also you can run, I run BitTorrent on it. People always kind of act like that's a weird thing that I mention. It's perfectly okay to have BitTorrent on your computer. But I thought I would take this opportunity of having to crack it open and um, repair the hard drive or swap out the hard drive uh, to answer a few questions and comments that I've received over the years and I still receive to this day about this machine. So why don't we get started right away and probably one of the biggest comments I receive when people see this computer on the internet is, wow, that's a lot of porn. And yes, it certainly would be a lot of porn. But um, as you all know, I do produce videos for YouTube that are not porn. Um, and um, those videos and those video projects can get quite big. So the main purpose for this, and again, 14 terabytes, sounds like an awful lot. Um, but consider one of the last videos I did was the half ass Project Corner Office. That was about a terabyte of video. Um, the biggest video I've done so far would be the whole apartment build, the, uh, the new workshop video, which was a three terabyte project. And actually towards the end of that, I could not back it up to this like I had wanted to because it was getting full. Um, and that's a project that I had to delete right away because I just couldn't uh, afford three terabytes of storage on this thing. In addition to backing up video projects, it's nice to be able to keep projects after they're done and get them off my other hard drives um, in case I ever re want to revisit them. And uh, in particular, one of the reasons my projects are so big is I shoot a lot of coverage being an editor, a lot more footage than I have to. And um, you know, if a project is popular enough, it would be great to be able to go back and make some changes or bring you another video that shows you footage you haven't seen or whatever. So that's kind of the primary reason um, why one would need 16 terabytes still. Nowadays, a lot of people are probably good with one or two, which ships normally with a single drive. Um, but that's why I built this thing, not porn. And so now as I'm about to get ready to start taking it apart, um, is a good time to answer another big question that I get specifically about this build, uh, which is, can I buy one? Um, and unfortunately, no. Um, I do receive that question a lot about some other builds too. Uh, there's a ton of reasons why I don't sell my builds and um, probably one of the biggest reasons is that oftentimes like this one and the Cinematograph HD and the desk and the um, not so much the OS X Box Pro, but a lot of these systems I kind of think more like they're prototypes than anything else. Meaning I'm very comfortable with them and I'm kind of okay with the way they are. But as you can see me going right now, they're not very user friendly. Here we have some Allen wrench bolts, which I got just because they were the only ones that I could get that were kind of the right size and color. Um, and they happen to have an Allen wrench. There's also some Phillips head and there's some flat heads. And then also just the way it comes apart and gets put back together. You can see right now to get to the hard drives, I'm gonna have to remove this part right here, this kind of clear canopy part, uh, along with then this front panel and uh, this back panel then has to come off as well to remove the hard drives because there's a couple other screws there. Then there's more screws underneath in the bottom. And so I happen to know it very well and I can deal with it having designed it, but um, to write a user manual or with products like this, it would get through a whole nother round of becoming user friendly and being able to be made so that someone else can take it apart and put it back together without damaging it um, is definitely a big deal. And to sell them, I would have to do that extra step before the back panel comes off these aluminum feet have to come off too, which again, wasn't, isn't the best design, but um, 
kind of the way it did get put together. Again, I don't really make big plans for these in the beginning. I just kind of start building. Um, that's the way they kind of end up. In addition to the user friendliness of the products, there's also just the finish of the products. And um, I remember, for instance, my first uh, kind of big LAN party that I went to was the Envision, uh, I think it was 2008 Envision um, event held by NVIDIA. And there was a case mod show, which I brought the Cinematograph HD to. And I just remember thinking it was kind of uh, funny to see the judges kind of go over them with a really fine tooth comb, kind of like a car show. And they would look at parts where you don't even really see them to see if they're sanded properly and to see if you know, you've uh, filed everything down properly. And to a certain extent, um, I'm kind of OK with things being a little bit rough around the edges, particularly if it's in an area you're never going to see. But if you are selling them, you kind of have to do that finish to it, which is just more steps. And to make it worth my time, I think I would just have to charge so much that I would feel uncomfortable with it. And you know what? More than anything, I also really enjoy that kind of creating a prototype of something um, as opposed to just manufacturing new ones for other people. And uh, that's what I really enjoy. Um, so I'm really excited to move on to new mods. But if we go ahead and continue on with the teardown, let's see. There we go. And you can see it's actually very dusty right now. I got quite a lot of comments about dust. Um, on the editing build as well. Um, but you know, in the real world, computers get dusty. That's kind of gross. Then as we get this back panel off, we get to see a lot more dust. And so now with the back completely off, you can get a bit of a better look at the uh, full system here. This motherboard, which is a Quanmax KEEX 2030, I believe, uh, motherboard. It's something called an ECX form factor, which is uh, also referred to as a 3.5 inch form factor. It's got the same footprint as a 3.5 inch hard drive. And so along there in the back, we also have a couple of hard drives, a uh, 320 gigabyte Western Digital Black 2.5 inch drive. And then behind that is a small SSD. This is uh, back when SSDs were very expensive for larger size. I think it's a 60 gigabyte SSD. So here we go, two more screws in the front. And then finally, we have a couple more screws back here. And so another question uh, while I'm at this point that I got about this is people saw my um, uh, how-to on the inline SATA connectors to power all these hard drives in a line, especially when you're dealing with a case this small that was important. Um, not having it, a lot of cables you can see are just stuffed in here, so um, having as few cables as possible really helps when you're in a tight spot. But a lot of people missed how you connected the data cables to these. So the reason I chose this particular board, the KEEX 2030, um, is that it had a PCI Express X4 slot on it. Um, and that was really great because that meant I could add an add-on card to make it so that it can have many more SATA ports. And uh, what turned out to be one of the smaller, uh, cheaper ones that I could use for this um, that has, was a very low profile card and had at least eight, which is what I wanted, um, was this high point raid card. And so that you can kind of see is tucked away in here, plugged into the motherboard down there. Um, and that, if you look around here around the front, it actually doesn't have any SATA ports. It has two SAS ports. And uh, SAS ports is a different interface that basically um, is very similar to the serial ATA interface, and uh, it has a fan out cable, which allows you to take one of those SAS ports and that converts it into four serial ATA cables that can then plug into your hard drives. And these are a bit tricky too. Again, with such the small place, I had to do a couple little tricks. You kind of have to reach in here and uh, press a little clip before you pull the cable. 
So here we have an SAS port. There's one more screw that we could not reach because these two cables were in the way. And then finally, these hard drives come free. And so these hard drives in the back also have to get unplugged here to get this thing out. Actually, that's not true. There is another way to get this out. I just forgot about it. It was just one less step, but um, this works too. And so you can see what a pain that was. And um, so these are not quite ready to be sold yet, but now we at least have access to the hard drive so that it can be pulled out and swapped with a new one. But before I uh, go ahead and do pull the hard drive, um, another big question I remember getting, or actually it was more of a comment, people saying you cannot mount hard drives at an angle like that. Um, this is something that I kind of just did because common sense tells me that you can mount hard drives at an angle like that. There are other cases out there that have hard drives mounted, maybe not at such an extreme angle, but an angle. A bunch of people commented, no, you can't, and did not cite why. A few people said some very vague things like, um, I remember one guy referenced uh, cent centrifugal force um, and referenced if you hold a bicycle wheel and it was spinning, it's very hard to turn, which has nothing to do with anything um, about why you can't mount hard drives on its side. If anything else, it points out the fact that there is a lot of force going on. In fact, it almost makes gravity seem irrelevant. Um, one person mentioned a, uh, a article for, or at least a data sheet from uh, one of the hard drives manufacturing saying that they test and uh, certify the hard drives for quality control um, at either um, level or a 90 degree angle. Um, and that's why you can't mount them at an angle like this. Again, that doesn't make any sense. That means that they don't test them at every single angle. Um, surely they don't want to spend 50% more money um, and 50% more drives that are wasted to testing at a 45 degree angle just to satisfy the few people that want to mount it at a 45 degree angle. And even if they did, these aren't at a 45 degree angle. I think they're more like a, I think it's more like a 60 degree angle or something like that. And then people would be saying, oh no, you have to either do it at a level or vertical or 45, you're doing it 60 and that's wrong. Um, so I've not seen any reason why you cannot mount them um, on their side. And so it's up to you whether you want to do it. Um, I would say after three years of having all these hard drives running 24 seven, one of them has died finally. Um, I'd say that's pretty good. Um, that could happen. Hard drives die all the time. They are going to die no matter what. Um, so the fact that of the eight, seven are still perfectly fine is great. And so while we're kind of on this similar topic, um, another question I got a lot is how well does it cool? And um, I'd say it cools quite well. The hard drives aren't incredibly cool. Um, I forgot the temperature they were at, but they were well within uh, the range that they're supposed to be at. All the system has is this one 120 millimeter fan. And this particular one is a slimline fan. I think it was made by Scythe, uh, which isn't in business anymore, I believe. Um, but um, it's a uh, 12 millimeters thick instead of the typical 25 millimeters for a 120 millimeter fan. But one of these actually died about a year ago. It was actually a little bit scary, but um, it actually made me feel a little bit better about the system because I happened to notice that one day when I passed it, the fan wasn't on and that the case was quite hot. Um, so um, I have no idea whether it had just died 10 minutes ago or it had been dead for a couple of days. Um, but it died, I turned the system off, swapped out the fan, all the hard drives were still fine. Um, they probably got pretty hot during that time, but um, you know, they still carried on for at least another year or so. And so that's the, uh, this is an exhaust fan, it pumps air out the back, and then um, it intakes through the bottom here. If I could tilt it up really quickly for you, you can see it's got these grooves on the bottom side, which are just kind of uh, channels that I cut to allow air to be pulled in underneath. And then the idea is hopefully with the airflow is they get pulled up through the drives, up through the top, and then down into the system and out the back. And it helps, I'm sure, that these rails are aluminum, which will obviously absorb the heat from the hard drives and give it a little bit more surface area to cool down. And one more question I received was about uh, these LEDs on the top, which indicate the health of the drive. They're blue when everything's okay and they're red 
when everything's not. And these are RGB LEDs, so they actually are single LEDs with multiple pins on it on the back, so you can light up with the red, you can light up with the blue, and you can light up with the green. I'm just using the blue and the red. Um, but the way they receive the signal is the RAID card. And these pinouts you would find on uh, this RAID card and a lot of other RAID cards are exactly like the ones you would find on a motherboard for a motherboard um, LED indicator or hard drive indicator. So they just send a positive signal to the LEDs that you would then ground to another wire. Like you can see all these wires are ground together or bundled together and then sent to a ground. And so the RAID card is what sends that signal to the LEDs to give you that additional information. Normally you can solder them too, but what I did here is I actually just um, use these breadboard connectors. I think that's what they're called. If I have a few more here, uh, but these are just jumper cables. If I got them on eBay, a few eBay uh, jumper cables, breadboard cables. Uh, these are the female ones, so you might want to say jumper female cables. Um, I got a bundle of these, and these are the same things you can use to make power switches too if you want. Um, normally a power switch would be two of them uh, bound together, but you can connect them individually. Um, and then cut them in half and wire them and solder them to something else, like a button. But that's handled by the RAID card. So now to go ahead and remove the dead um, hard drive here. The best way to do that is to check your RAID uh, management software, which gives you usually the serial number of the dead hard drive. And in this case, it ends in 2145. Uh, and luckily, hard drives mark that information at the top of them most of the time to make them much easier to find out. And uh, it happens to be the hard drive right in the front. So here we go. Here is our dead drive. Um, I'll just set that right down here. And just to show you really quick, I can pull out this is the SAS fan out cable. So you can see right here, it's just got the SAS end. And then here are four serial ATA um, cables. So that's how uh, they get data in this thing. And uh, unfortunately with these, there's not a ton of choice um, with um, these fan out cables. There was only a couple places uh, you can get them. You certainly can't get the choices that you can. Like with these, you can get cables that are only, you know, six inches long or four inches long, or, uh, and they come in different styles. But um, so this was one of a big challenge with this is cramming these wires and getting them right in the small space underneath the um, in the hard drives. So just to answer one more very general question uh, about this system, uh, a lot of people ask just how how does it run. And again, I would say overall really great. I've had it for, like I said, it's been running for about three years um, and it is almost full. So um, it definitely is being used. And um, I really, really like this 3.5 inch form factor. I look forward to probably doing another build with it. Originally I was looking at, I know Via has those Pico ITX form, form factors, which I messed around with once before. Um, but I just had a few problems with it, and I think they have a couple, two or three boards now. And even though these don't have a ton of boards themselves, they're kind of harder to get, these 3.5 inch form factors. They just have a lot more options. Um, this one was an Atom processor in it, and again, I chose it mainly because it had that 4X PCI Express slot, and also low power. Again, I knew I would be pushing it power-wise, um, getting all of these hard drives, plus the motherboard, plus the other hard drives running. Uh, with a external power supply, which is right here. Um, this supplies just DC power to the system through the back, and then I split it uh, to give the hard drives power separately um, with this latch button that can be turned on, uh, which was actually really great in this circumstance because as soon as the RAID failed, I just turned it off, and I could continue using the uh, computer for the other purposes until I got around to replacing the drive. So uh, just to give you an idea about power consumption for this thing, uh, without these hard drives turned on, with the latch turned off, uh, the system along with the other hard drives um, runs about 30 watts measured with a kilowatt. Um, and then when you add the hard drives to it, or actually the hard drives alone, or add it to it, was about um, 75 to 85 watts for the RAID array. So um, you can see that's coming pretty close to right up to the uh, maximum of what that power supply can provide. Uh, but again, that kind of reinforced the 
good choice of using the atom board. There was also uh, one that took an i5, I think, or um, some sort of other mobile processor, but that used more watts than this atom. However, the downside is it is a little bit underpowered. I tried things like um, drive encryption, which uses the processor to encrypt the data onto the hard drives, and uh, that just slowed it down too much. Right now, the uh, bottleneck is the gigabit ethernet port, which is how I transfer files back and forth, but um, with drive encryption, it just became unusably slow. Um, I do use it for some other things. Like I said, I, I upload uh, videos to YouTube with it um, overnight because, again, I could leave this one on. It's in the closet. It's on 24-7 as opposed to leaving my other computers on, um, which that usually takes a few hours, and usually I'm done in the evening, so that's a good thing to do. But I have found that things are a lot faster with Chrome than Firefox. Uh, I think you all know that um, Chrome does use less resources than Firefox, but for most of us on an average computer, it doesn't matter. Again, this one, um, using as little power as it does, it doesn't have a lot of processing power. So um, that's one thing that I would have liked to be a little bit better with this system. But again, the trade-off for the power consumption um, made it work out. Otherwise, uh, like I said, it's been running great. I had one problem in the beginning, and uh, that's something a couple people did point out, is that these Western Digital Green Drives are not the best for RAID. Specifically, I've read RAID 5. It had to do with a um, feature that Western Digital earlier gave you more control over um, called TLER, which is Time Limited Error Recovery. And that has to do with the idea that hard disks normally, when they see a bad sector, when it can't read a data, it'll keep trying to reread it uh, for a while so you can reuse it if possible, if you could salvage the sector. Uh, but in a RAID array, that causes problems, and that causes hard disks to drop out uh, of their array. And um, actually, I said that wrong. It's TLER actually fixes that problem. So they had a utility called WDTLER, which then you could take your green drive um, and turn that feature on. So that would tell it not to keep trying to reread that sector and to just mark it as bad and kind of move on. Um, so when I initially started the system up, hard drives would drop out of their RAID array. Um, and then I had to pull every single drive and run this utility on them, and that fixed it. Problem is, around 2000, late 2009, they decided to remove that feature. So actually, I just decided to test it with this hard drive. I had an extra 2 terabyte green drive um, that was manufactured just towards the end of 2009, and I tried to enable that feature. And uh, that would not work anymore like they said it would. Uh, and unfortunately, one of the reasons they did that is they wanted to start pushing their RAID drives, their specified RAID drive, which actually I ended up getting these red hard drives. Um, so they're, they're kind of drives that they're making for RAIDs for network attached storage devices. Um, and um, I decided to eventually get these anyway. They're about $15 more, $20 more, um, because in particular, they're really great power-wise. They use a lot less power than a lot of the other drives. So uh, with these pushing it so close, to uh, kind of the maximum of what my uh, power supply can handle, I thought might as well get a really low powered hard drive. I believe the other hard drives from uh, like Seagate or Hitachi um, don't have that problem as much. Um, and the 7200 RPM drives in particular from all the brands don't run into that problem as much. Again, with a uh, RAID 1 and RAID 0, I hear you're pretty good, but RAID 5 really screws with the Western Digital Green drives. So uh, now the step is going to be to put this, install this hard drive in, uh, put it back together, and then hopefully it'll rebuild. And um, in addition, I'm also going to install Windows 8 while I've got everything kind of taken apart and it's been out of commission for a while. Um, and hopefully that'll give me a little bit more performance. The system requirements for 8 is a little bit under 7. Um, but I also have a ton of other uh, computers now running Windows 8 and as well as a Windows 8 phone. So um, hopefully that'll make them all play a little bit better together. So uh, I'm going to end the video right here and uh, get the rest of that done so I can get back to making other videos for you. Engine Rebuild Part 1 and 2 actually have been shot, as well as the one before it, quite a while ago. And um, I'm just getting to editing them now and finishing them, hopefully very soon. So uh, that's coming up next. Um, and until then, thanks for watching.